Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry. Uh, I'd just like to introduce myself and the company. Uh, my name is Jonathan. Uh, I've been with SoftLayer for the uh, past three years. I am basically a key account executive with uh, SoftLayer. Um, so, um, what brings us here today uh, would be, for example, the mobile apps that we see on our handphones. How many people have mobile apps, here? Uh, mobile phones here? I'm pretty sure everyone has mobile phones, right? <laughs> so, um, the main reason we are here today is to explain uh, why um, the market that we see today is moving towards the cloud. Um, today, traditional businesses, especially when it comes to being able to um, supply uh, mobile apps across the globe. Uh, if you go on to traditional hosting uh, methods, that would sooner uh, but later uh, die out because of the in incapacity to scale up and also the raw, um, raw infrastructure that's needed um, to, to boost up your apps that, that you want to publish out there. So without further ado, I'll just uh, like to make some introduction to my company. Uh, we have been formed uh, since 2005. Um, by 10 industry veterans who has been in the hosting industry for the past 10 to, 10 to 15 years. Um, and they have been with a traditional hosting company um, called The Planet. And so uh, it's essentially going to be providing um, a dedicated service, uh, VPS, uh, shared hosting, etc. And of course, they encountered a lot of restrictions in the, in the infrastructure uh, because of the incapability to scale up and scale down. Um, so the, f the founding principles of our company are basically to be uh, innovative. Um, today as we see um, one thing uh, goes viral or one thing is hot, the next thing, uh, the next day it could die down. And of course we want to be able to empower our users, we want to give you uh, full control, um, the ability to scale up and scale down. And uh, of course the key takeaway today would be automation. Um, if it's not automated, um, it doesn't exist on software. So automation is key because it um, minimizes human error, uh, it's efficient, it's quick. And last but not least, integration. We want to be providing a platform or infrastructure that you're able to integrate uh, and ease into slowly uh, without um, moving out of your comfort zone. And last but not least, we've been acquired by IBM in July 2013 uh, because of our um, technology, uh, IMS, uh, the infrastructure management uh, system that we have, and of course the, the infrastructure as a service that we provide. Um, so essentially what we do provide would be uh, virtual service, uh, what we call cloud, um, as well as bare metal service, uh, dedicated service, essentially they are all racked up in our data center, um, storage as well, uh, we use iSCSI SAN, uh, under the brand called NetApp. I'm not sure whether you guys have heard of NetApp. And of course, uh, virtual instances that I mentioned earlier. So put this all together, um, essentially is what uh, infrastructure that we provide out there. And of course, um, the layers that uh, combine everything together would be the network portion, as well as the data centers that we have. Uh, we have about up to 18 data centers today. And of course, we're expanding uh, rapidly as well. And we also have the infrastructure management system that I mentioned earlier. So everything is managed through the system, uh, from the dedicated service, from the hardware, uh, from the storage system, all the way through linking up with the network, as well as uh, the data center. And so this is our global presence. Um, the red dots are, not too sure whether you can see the red dots, but never mind. Um, so we have currently Singapore, uh, as a HQ uh, within Asia Pack, and we have expanded to Hong Kong and most recently Tokyo as well. Um, down in Oceania, we have uh, Melbourne and we'll be expanding to Sydney as well. Uh, and then of course, moving to our um, HQ uh, in the US, we have up to about 11 data centers there. Uh, we have uh, Dallas, Houston, uh, San Jose, Seattle, Washington, DC. Uh, and of course, in Canada, we, uh, we have expanded to Toronto as well. And in Europe, uh, we have London, Amsterdam, as well as Paris. So um, as we progress on, we'll be, of course, looking to expand, for example, in uh, South America, um, possibly China, etc. So today, as you can see, we have 
a huge presence across the globe, um, including the 20 over network pops that we have. Um, and of course, the most important thing that I'd like to uh, highlight would be the lines that join each and every one of our data centers, as well as the pops, uh, the network point of presence. Uh, these lines are essentially um, fibers or cables that run from uh, countries to countries. And each are going to be a dual 10 gig uh, lines. And the best thing about this, if you were to do uh, data synchronization across countries, across uh, continents, um, would be that you'll be able to use this entirely for free. So these lines essentially are going to be connecting all our data centers together and you will have a, uh, you, you, you'll be able to use this um, network uh, completely free of charge. So you can transfer your data from, for example, Singapore to Hong Kong uh, free of charge uh, via this private network that we have. So this is a really, uh, key, really good and I think we are the only hosting provider that out there that has this technology so far. Uh, I'd like to bring you to a um, case study that we have. Uh, it's called Multiplay. Um, so this company has been running um, a huge number of games, up to about 60 games today. Um, they run across uh, Europe, Asia, as well as the North America. Um, and of course, they're using software because we are able to provide the skill that they want. As you can see, this game is Battlefield uh, 4. Uh, it's going to require a lot of um, resource. It's going to be resource intensive. Uh, it's going to be a you, it accommodates up to about hundred thousand peak concurrent uh, gamers. So there's a huge number of traffic coming in and going out. And so the reason why multiplayer selected software would be uh, out, out of our skill uh, ability to scale up, and of course uh, ability to provide them the raw power that is found in bare metal service, the dedicated service that we call them. And so, as you can see, yeah, I'm not sure how many of you guys have played this game. No? Okay, never mind. <laughs> moving on. That's fine. Uh, moving on would be uh, Motions Element. Um, it's a local, uh, local company here, uh, and they have branched out into new markets. They basically provide uh, videos, etc. Um, so, They've used us because of our ability to scale. And in, in today's world, if if you have um, you, if you want to reach out to the mass market, um, be it your apps, I think the most important thing would be ability to scale as well as the availability to your users as well. Uh, imagine YouTube is going to be um, not running most of the time. I think most of the users would, would just uh, move out or stop using their site, right? So it's going to be the same thing for applications, websites. Um, softwares, um, platforms, etc. Uh, moving on to our next uh, company would be Drawing Bot. Uh, so it's essentially a platform uh, based on the web. So it's going to be uh, providing you details of the events. Uh, that you want to, to run, for example, the organizers that you're selecting, for example, your children parties, uh, corporate events, as well as wedding, etc. <coughs> so you can come on to this website, um, key in the dates, key in the venue, etc., and get started. And so uh, if, if you're looking today, if it had been uh, traditionally been uh, incorporated onto the existing or traditional hosting that we call, um, this would not have taken place because of um, the raw power that's needed for, uh, for handling the database workloads um, as well as the cloud environment that is flexible enough to scale up. So today it's all about uh, providing the essential uh, power to run your applications, your database, as well as the ability <coughs> to scale. So I, I, I would say these two are the most cri uh, critical uh, factors here. Um, another one would be grammatics. Grammatics. Um, so, it's essentially, for example, if you want to, uh, if you see some something online, and for example, this is an effort, and you, you see that you want to uh, find out what type of chair they're using. Um, so that's where grammatics would include a link, uh, and it gives you a link to the pricing of, for example, 
a sofa or a dress here or the uh, travel destination as well as the dress that you can see here while being worn by Beyonce um, so it, it provides you information and where to buy um, the, the materials or the, uh, the furniture or even the uh, travel destination um, so they are using a lot of uh, raw power so they are definitely using our bare metal service for processing high workloads um, so today as we can see there are a lot of companies out there that uh, require um, dedicated service cloud infrastructure and the most important thing is we want you uh, to concentrate on your business so we want you to be concentrating on what you're good at and not um, having worries about your infrastructure to manage those applications that you develop, those databases that you develop, those platforms that you develop, etc. And there are, of course, many more uh, companies out there. Uh, I'd just like to uh, bring your attention to this company called Ambi. So, Ambi Climate is a standalone plug in, plug and play, um, I would say, upgrade for your air conditioners. They have, for example, you want to um, um, moderate your home temperature. Uh, Back home, uh, you can use this uh, device, sync it with your iPhone or your Android Android phone, and then you can control the temperature of your air conditions at home, so that when you reach home, um, your, con your 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 preferred temperature is of course in place, so you don't have to uh, manually switch on your 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 air conditions, etc. So up up to today, they have raised about hundred thousand uh, under I think. Kickstarter, so um, so of course there are many more companies that are like this, and most importantly is because of the ability to scale as well as the uh, resources that are available to them. And I'd like to uh, introduce uh, some of the customers that we have uh, using software. I'm pretty sure many of you guys know WhatsApp. <laughs> Everyone uses WhatsApp, uh, I think in Singapore, I think more or less. So. Uh, they have been with us for the past few years. They have up to about a thousand over servers with soft layer so across the globe, of course. So all your data is going to be stored. Um, and if today, if WhatsApp had gone to a traditional hoster, I don't think they'd be able to handle the load uh, incoming in terms of traffic, uh, in terms of the data that is available. I mean, everyone sends out at least 100 WhatsApp a day, right? Um, so, and of course, many more uh, companies out there. Uh, we don't just specialize in mobile and communications. Uh, we have uh, software as a service partners, um, social media, uh, platform as a service, uh, even some hosting and service providers are using us. And so we, we, we see a great shift uh, over the past coming years into the enterprise market as well. So even enterprises, big enterprises out there, MNCs are slowly but surely moving into the cloud. Um, so I'd like to uh, move over to my demonstration. Um, one second. Can everyone see this? Okay. Great. So this is essentially the control panel that we will give our users when they sign up with SoftLayer, uh, whether it be a virtual server, a cloud or a dedicated server. So they have complete access to our uh, control, po uh, control panel. Uh, and so they be able to do, for example, check uh, various uh, things. So from the top, maybe I'll start here, is the accounting summary. Uh, it shows your current balance and then your estimated uh, next balance. As well as the current payment mode, uh, we accept credit cards as well as PayPal. And of course, moving down would be uh, the ability to order uh, new devices, uh, storage, uh, network capabilities, as well as security. Um, so I'll go into each uh, of them uh, later. And of course, the tickets, uh, support tickets that are open, uh, unread, uh, and for example, status of your service that's online. Sorry. And I'll just bring your attention to maybe users for now. 
Um, so over here you'll be able to create uh, new users. Um, so for example you have uh, Windows administrators. Uh, you want to limit their access to the other service. You just want um, them to access those Windows services. That can be done here. Or if you have a billing uh, department, you want to restrict them to only be able to view uh, invoices. That also can be done here. Um, so in terms of uh, control, we give complete control in terms of what you want to do. And of course, anything that's clickable on this website um, can be uh, sync. Uh, we, we have API calls. We have, about, we have up to about 3,200 API calls here. So you can sync them with your existing APIs, link them up with your websites, etc. So that's completely um, up to you. And so we will go uh, to the device list. So over here it shows you the device name, um, the device type. So for example, it's a virtual server, and where is it located? So this indicates Paris. Um, see this well. Okay, anyway, it provides you also the public uh, IP address. You have to resize the browser. Yeah. Do you not have any Windows manager? Okay, there you go. No worries. Okay. So, it pro uh, we give you information on public IPs uh, as well as the private IPs. As I mentioned, we, we have two different types of networks, or three in fact. Uh, one public, uh, one private which we'll be using our uh, list lines across an intercontinent as well as it gives you um, the start date of that particular machine when it was ordered. And of course under actions you'll be able to uh, reboot, power on and off, rename the instance or even cancel the instance. Um, so let's just go into this device. So over here we give you um, information, more information actually. Um, so when was the what's the status of the uh, virtual server? Uh, the start date if, if it was reloaded, as well as the OS. Um, this is running a CentOS six LAM stack. Um, the number, the amount of RAM on the virtual server, as well as the processor. So this is going to be a sixteen core. Um, moving down would be uh, our network, as I mentioned. This is would be the public network and the pri uh, private network. So we provide uh, public I IP addresses, um, the default gateway, subnet mask, and um, this uh, port port speed that we call it. So over here we have 100 Mbps available on the uh, on the on the virtual server, uh, up to a I think 10 gig for for the dedicated service, and so. Uh, bring your attention to this uh, particular uh, selection that you can opt for. Uh, disconnect it. So, I mean, today if you have if you're running databases, you would most likely not want your database to be exposed to the public internet, right? So you can disconnect this, and it becomes like a private server. So it becomes only available on the private network. So it links up all your servers on the private network. So your, for example, your dedicated servers or your other virtual servers can access this machine only via the private network. So this gives you more security um, so that your database is not exposed to the, to the public. It's not being, uh, you minimize the risk of being hacked. Um, and of course, each uh, virtual server, we have allocated about five terabytes of bandwidth outgoing. Incoming traffic is gonna be free. Um, for dedicated servers, it's gonna be 20 terabytes of uh, bandwidth. Uh, outgoing, incoming is also free. So all incoming traffic to soft layers, uh servers are free. We only um, start to charge after you exceeded the allocated bandwidth. And it's also the same for the private network. Uh, so we give you the IP address, uh, 
the Sunland Mars and even the speed. Um, also, I, you, you will be able to disconnect it if you want. So, and of course the VLANs that we, that we provide, so it can be a private VLAN or a public VLAN. Um, so just bringing your attention to the next uh, options. We, so under big data, we have uh, Cloudera available, MongoDB, as well as the React uh, solutions uh, for big data. Uh, we also provide monitoring services for, for, for our customers. Um, standard, enterprise, premium, and of course we give you the ability to monitor different ports, uh, different applications, etc. Um, and under manage, uh, you can manage your passwords, your images that you want. For example, you want today's image uh, to be to be taken, and you just want to use it like a backup. That can be done. So you can take an image, store it, and of course in future if you want to uh, fall back onto the image, that's also possible. And of course, SSH keys, uh, provisioning scripts that you like to run, and of course, uh, control panels, C panel, plus, etc. And uh, of course, this uh, would be our auto scale function. Uh, when I was talking about uh, uh, scalability, I think this would be uh, quite critical uh, because you can organize um, or you can configure your your your, your infrastructure once it reaches a certain threshold um, to put up new services. For example, to put up uh, a virtual server <coughs> or to put up a dedicated server, that's also possible. So once a, for example, on the RAM, if you, if you can set limits, for example, to hit 80% threshold to put up the next server and the next and the next and the next. Uh, moving on to storage. Um, so we have three different types of storage, block storage, file storage, and object storage. Uh, file storage be, uh, being our uh, iSCSI SAN. Um, it's scalable as well, uh, up to about 3 terabytes of space at each location. Uh, file storage, uh, we have the NAS storage as well as the consistent performance storage where you can select the IOPS for the uh, storage up to about 6,000 IOPS. And uh, object storage would be the simple archive uh, solution storage. And of course, if you want your content to be uh, more available to your users, uh, more accessible to your users, uh, we recommend using CDN, uh, Content Delivery Network. Uh, this uh, provides your content to be more accessible and, uh, and of course, nearer to your customers. So we used Edgecast uh, CDN, and I believe they have about 25 or more pops across the globe. So this distributes all your content um, seamlessly. Um, and of course, data transfer, and uh, last but not least, backup. So we use eVault backup uh, for, for, for backing up your, your data or your websites, etc. Uh, moving on would be network. Um, as I mentioned, you can, you can view your summary of for the month, uh, the incoming bandwidth, as well as the outgoing bandwidth, um, so that you can make, I, I would say, plans for the next month, and of course, you can see uh, the traffic going to your website or to your application. And I think that's going to be key because you want to be uh, planning for your next step, uh, what, road, what routes you should take, etc. Uh, and of course, we provide DNS uh, management system as well uh, to manage your DNS, uh, A records, etc. And IP management uh, to see all your available IPs you have with software, be it public or private IPs. Um, also, uh, load balancing capabilities uh, to load balance your traffic uh, between all your services. For example, you have uh, five. If you have one website, but you can uh, distribute the traffic uh, across five servers, so that your users wouldn't feel that uh, lag. I would say. Um, and of course, we provide gateway appliances, uh, IPsec VPN um, tools, and direct link. Um, so DirectLink is going to be a solution that we provide you uh, moving your traffic from your office um, to our POP and from the POP directly into SoftLayer's uh, environment. So this will be done uh, via the private network as well. Um, and moving on to security, uh, we have vulnerability scans available. 
um, to see how vulnerable your environment is. Uh, security software, um, we, we are using McAfee antivirus as well as McAfee HIPS, uh, host intrusion uh, protection system. Uh, SSL, as well as uh, compliance report, the SOC2 report. Uh, if you need that compliance report, you can just click on this and we'll send you the compliance report uh, directly to your email. And under uh, the other services that we have, message queue, uh, email delivery, uh, digital transcoding, as well as domain registrations. Um, and all the way to the left uh, will be support. Uh, so all our users will be will be able to add tickets, uh, be it support tickets, network tickets, etc. So let me just bring you into the page. So over here, you're going to uh, select the subject. <coughs> um, be it, um, I would say, accounting request, CDN request. So any type of uh, issues that you might have or software, you can always lodge a ticket. Or, or go on to our online chat that we have available on our website. Um, and so you can enter the title. Uh, you can email um, your other, for example, you have many partners. You want them to be in the loop as well. You can add their email addresses. Um, the amount of devices that this ticket is associated with. Uh, and of course the details, uh, be it some screenshots, um, some updates, some files, etc. And all of these uh, <coughs> available, uh, I would say selections for a portal can be viewed uh, by clicking this. So you can go on to this and then basically see all the options available. So. And of course, you'll be able to place orders. Uh, so bring uh, you onto this page. As I was uh, mentioning, you can order bare metal service by the hour, by the month. Um, virtual service as well. Uh, you'll be able to order by the hour, by the month. Um, so you can basically uh, pay as you use. Uh, if you don't need it, you can always cancel it. Um, and of course, block storage, file storage, also mentioning object storage, CDN, um, network, uh, Citrix, uh, NetScaler VPX, the other gateways, IPsec VPN, uh, and so on and so forth. And of course, uh, firewalls that are available, um, and 40 gig security appliance. So that brings me close to my session. Anybody have any questions? Yes. So how does this compare to AWS? Um, yeah. So AWS is going to be more cloud, where software provides you an option. We give you uh, dedicated service uh, as well as cloud. And in terms of uh, being comparable, I believe you're co pretty competitive as well. Um, for AWS, they only include about one gig of data transfer. Um, so if your website is going to be having a lot of traffic, you're going to pay a lot for data transfer. Uh, whereas if you compare that against our cloud service, we have bundled in five terabyte of bandwidth, four virtual service, and dedicated service is going to be 20 terabyte. So I'm pretty sure everyone wants their site or their applications to be busy. So eventually, you're going to pay a lot more uh, for the data that you use. So, sure, great. Is it also a la carte add on services? Yep, yeah, so you basically you can go onto this uh, control panel um, that you have and then basically add services as and when you, you need them. So it's going to be, uh, if you need them, you can always order them and all, all our services, all our services are ready within two to four hours. So that's a, a very short span of time. Sure. Any questions? Any more questions? Sure.
thank you. Uh, just like to bring attention to this gentleman over here. He's in charge of our of our startup. Yeah, uh, I'm Lucas. Uh, I'm in charge of the soft layer capitalist team for APAC. Mm -hmm. So if you're a startup, come talk to me, and I'll give you out free credits for a year. <laughs> Which is great. Sure. Thank you, guys.